back. Welcome back. We are investigating a scripture here in the book of Acts where we see a man and his wife coming into the house of God with money that wasn't sufficient and they got killed for that. And uh, I'm trying to help you understand that um, it was after they had lied to the Holy Ghost. They didn't see the Holy Ghost in the church. They didn't see God in the church. They didn't see angels in the church. They saw Peter. They were apostles of God that were present. And then he lied because he thought these were merely men of God and yet God works through his people. And Peter said, because you have lied. These are the two reasons why he died. You have lied to the Holy Ghost. Concerning what? You kept part of the money that was given to you when you sold your land. That on its own, they died. And they were killed. Now the question is, why would the Holy Ghost kill a couple for money? Why would the Holy Spirit do such a thing or allow such a thing? Because remember, they didn't kill them physically. They didn't use a knife. They didn't poison them. No, no one touched them. But as words were coming out of the men of God, they died. Which means there was a, f a force and an invisible power behind those words spoken that killed them. Why would the Holy Ghost kill people for financial reasons? Peter said, you have tempted. You are tempting God. God is always tempted by money. He's tested by money. He's proven by money. That's why he says, try me, prove me herewith in your tithe and offerings and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain. God is always tried by finances. You can prove God by your finances. And so the Holy Ghost is killing them because they didn't bring enough money. So if there was no figure desired by the apostles, if there was no target, like we want to raise so much, if there was no target, why would they ask for more? If Apostle Peter had no specific figure, why would he say, is this enough? Why would he ask for more? Which means there was a specific amount of money that was required from them. And the reason why the Holy Ghost killed them is because they involved him, the Holy Ghost. They involved him in the selling of the land. How? This land probably was on sale for five years. And nobody bought it. No one was interested. But when they said, we would want to sell it and give the money to the kingdom of God, then the Holy Ghost was motivated and he came in. What did he do? He brought the buyer. It was the work of the Holy Spirit who brought somebody who would buy the land because the money was promised to the Holy Ghost that I would give it to you. And then they made the Holy Spirit to participate in their business and in their transaction, which is a very dangerous thing. When you ask the Lord to bless you and you make him believe that you are going to be a blessing and you are going to support his vision, and God sponsors you, God gives you a job, God gives you a business, and then at the end of the day when you get proceeds, profit from the business, you forget. That's what gets you into a lot of problems. The Holy Spirit participated in the transaction. 
raised people that would come and buy the land, hoping that he was going to get all of it as per the promise. So when the Holy Ghost had finished bringing people together, raising money for them, now the money was in their hands. There was a change of mind. And they kept the money, some of it. And the Holy Ghost said, okay, your land was expensive. But I brought somebody who was never going to negotiate the price. Because I wanted all of it. And then you used me in the process. Now, you can't even give me what I've worked for. I've worked. I've worked. I've worked. So that's the only thing that can give the Holy Ghost a justification as to why such people would be killed for not bringing all of it. How many times have you asked God, if you do this for me, I'm going to do this for, for you. If you bless me, I'll do that. If you give me money, I'll do that. Many promises. And God, based on that, supported you, kept you alive, healed your body, hoping that when you recover, you go back to work, you will remember your words and you forgot. So understand, it is very, very important. We test God when we bring before him something that is not sufficient, if there was no specific figure, why would Peter say, is this enough? So now I'm about to take you to another scripture which is very important. We look uh, at the book of uh, Joshua, chapter number six and verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Now, let's stop focusing on this. Look at me, let me explain some few things to you. Probably you might want to have a bit of a background of this story. Where is it coming from? What is happening? What is the scenario like? Joshua, the man that you know, that really followed God and served under the leadership of Moses. And when Moses died, God said to Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now rise up. But if you read your Bible carefully, it really says, God spoke to Joshua, Moses' minister. God spoke to Joshua, Moses' minister. That introduction is very powerful. Not God's minister. He was Moses' minister. And he spoke to him. But it is at this moment now when they are faced with a situation, Moses is gone. Joshua is left. He is now the leader. Now, there is a city called Jericho. And it had walls that were very massive. They had done everything to make sure that the citizens are safe. So the Bible says in that chapter, chapter number six, and the gates were straightly shut. Because of the fear of the Jews, they were so much afraid of the Israelites. So there was the security was so tight because they had heard already what God had done in Egypt. And this tribe and this uh, nation is traveling towards this direction. So they did everything to make sure that they were safe from the hands of the Hebrews. And yet spies were sent to investigate. They got into the city and they walked out of the city. 
And there is a woman in that city who looked after them, though she was a harlot, but she looked after them very well and kept them. And a promise was given because of what she did that became her altar. And they say disaster is coming to this city. But you shall be spared yourself and your family members if they agree to come into your house where you have kept us. The only place where you kept us, that's where you, are. you shall also be kept. So she built an order of safety for herself and for the entire family that was going to join her. So altars, you see them everywhere in the word of God. Because in your house we survived, you also, in your own same house, you shall survive. Anything outside of this house shall never survive. So they are promising her that a problem is coming. But as long as you can remain here, you shall be safe. Why? Because she looked after men of God. Okay, so here comes the day. Joshua now wants to take over the city of Jericho. And he got some instructions from God. This is how you are going to do it because God is a God of instructions. This is how you are going to do it. You are going to have seven priests that would walk ahead of the people. Make sure they carry the Ark of the Covenant. It was simply like a box, like this, overlaid with pure gold, outside and inside, and in between, there was a shitim hood, and there were poles sideways that they would use to carry it. So let them carry the Ark of the Covenant, walk before the people, and let the rest of the people follow. And there was a choir holding trumpets that were ready to blow the trumpets. And this thing, remember, it was made up of gold, pure gold. And it was upon that place where God would come and sit and fight their battles. And God was never attracted by any other thing amongst them. It was the Ark of the Covenant. Why the Ark of the Covenant? That's where gold was. Gold attracts God. Where there is gold, God sits. There is no instrument, there is no furniture in the Holy of Holies that had more power than the Ark of the Covenant. And there is no other furniture again which had more gold than the Ark of the Covenant. And there were two ch cherubs on top of the Ark which were bending over each other with their wings covering the place called the mercy seat. Mercy seat. It's a seat. It's a seat where the mercies of God sits on. It's a seat. And the seat was made up of gold. That's where the mercy of God would come and sit. You, you look for the mercies of God. Look for where God is. God sits where there is prosperity. So God would come and sit. So I'm, I'm not here to talk about that, but I want you to understand one thing. So they would carry the Ark of the Covenant, and God would do some miracles from the Ark of the Covenant. But God said, you are going to do this for six days, and on the seventh day, each day before the seventh, you surround the city once. Go around about the city once. And again the following day once. It was like a week. It was like a week. So, but on the seventh day, they had to go around Jericho for seven times, and after that, they had to blow the trumpets. But there was an instruction given to Joshua by God. He said, when you enter, you shall have victory. You shall subdue this nation. But 
of the spoils and the things that you get from the city. Make sure <coughs> that this time around everything that you get does not belong to you. It's mine. So take everything in terms of money, the treasure, put it in my house. It's my own project. This battle is my own fundraising battle. You don't get a dollar out of it, and yet I will use you to raise that money. Hmm. So the seventh time, the Bible tells me that the walls came falling down straight. Boom. And Israel went in and took everything, and they handed it over to Joshua. And God, Joshua, placed everything before the Lord. But then something had happened. Remember Joshua in that particular scripture had instructed them, be very careful guys that you don't take anything. So that's why now if you look in at verse number 18, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing and you make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Please understand that. Trouble, 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 trouble. You will trouble Israel by touching something that you are not allowed to touch. You bring trouble to Israel. You bring trouble to your generation. You bring trouble to your family. Don't touch what you are not permitted by God to touch. What you bring is trouble, 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 trouble. And I've seen people everywhere going places in search for prayers. Pray for me. Deliver me. And what they're trying to run away from is a trouble that was introduced by something that was touched in the family which shouldn't have been touched. Trouble. So what you have right now is you are watching this uh, telecast is that you have a trouble. That much you don't need to prophesy. You know you have a problem. But the source of your problem is uh, a mystery. You don't know the origin of the trouble. What caused you to enter into that situation? If the doctors are treating the disease, but the origin, they are not even aware of it. If you touch anything, you will bring trouble to Israel. Altars are very powerful. Altars are very, very, very powerful. So now, look at the next verse, verse number 19. What was he talking about? But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. God had a treasury. Come on, this is the same God that we save. He would keep money in a certain lock somewhere there was a safe. God would want to have money somewhere on earth that belonged to him. God, not even a man of God, God himself wanted to see gold that belonged to him kept somewhere. So now, let me, let, me, let me narrate the story. So now, when they had uh, finished gathering the spoils, something then happened in the coming chapters. There was a man by the name Acre. And this man, when the rest of the people were busy submitting what they'd collected from Jericho, this man by the name Achan had taken something and kept it somewhere and thought God was not present and thought God was not intelligent enough to know. Now I'm joining you. I chose to start from the New Testament, going back so that you understand. A similar situation that you see happening with Ananias and Sapphira. You see the same is about to happen here again. Under same circumstances where something that should have been given to God was kept by the human being. 
And there are consequences that no man of God can do anything about except God himself when he chooses to use the man. But understand, I'm coming back to explain to you the most horrible thing that happened to the man who kept something that should have been given to God. Please, stay tuned. I'm coming back.